Now, most of us may know that at the end of a PhD, you have to complete a dissertation, but very few people talk about what is a dissertation. So today we're talking about what it is, why it matters, and even some basic information on possible ways to structure your dissertation. So if you're somebody who's getting into graduate school, or if you're getting closer to the dissertating process and have no idea what to do next, this video is for you. So first, what even is a dissertation? Well, a dissertation is the culminating document that is required for most PhDs across the US. And specifically, it is supposed to be, or most likely is going to be, a research-based document. And for every graduate student, a dissertation is unique to them and their research topic. Now again, like I said, dissertations vary per degree, per program, per department. And so things may change depending on where you're at but generally you can expect a dissertation to be as short as maybe anywhere from 80 pages to as long as 500 plus pages though I would not suggest spending or devoting 500 plus pages on a dissertation and while we may all have a very specific degree or a general degree I mean your dissertation is where you as a researcher or as a future PhD are presenting your new knowledge and so a dissertation is very important to a PhD process because it is the stepping stone or the beginning to your work or your scholarship that you are contributing to the field. Now, as always, when you are writing your dissertation or like anything in graduate school, it's going to be very particular to you and your degree and your department. So it's important to make sure that you are talking to somebody who has this information, be it your academic advisor, your faculty mentor, or even older graduate students in your department. But just Generally, dissertations are formatted in very specific ways, especially if you are in the social sciences and the STEM fields. And while I'm about to present a very structured and formulaic dissertation format that is specifically tailored to STEM and social sciences, I do think it's important to know for people who are in the humanities, it is possible for your dissertation to be formatted in this way. However, it's just a little bit um, different for humanities students as we have different methodologies and approaches. And I will talk about that a little bit later in this video. So for STEM and social sciences dissertations, it is oftentimes very formulaic where there's specific chapters that have specific jobs. So you most likely will start your dissertation off with an overview or an introduction. And that is presenting kind of the background story, the information about your research and what has led you to this process or the significance of your research. Then your next chapter will focus on a literature review. And this is where you will collect all the main scholarship or all the foundational scholarship that has helped you process or build your research or is that it's just so important to your field that you have to demonstrate you know what it is and that your dissertation or your research is in conversations with the big foundational sources or scholarship. Then after your literature review, you'll have to present your methods or methodologies. And your methods and methodologies is all about how you are going about doing your research. How are you collecting data? What is your data and how do you plan on interpreting this data now if you're somebody who needs more information on methods and methodologies leave a comment because I can make an entire video about that and really break down the difference between methods and methodologies but for now we'll keep going with the dissertation structure so after your methodologies then you'll want to present your data or your analysis and here is where you're coming to your dissertation with all the information that you've collected from the field whatever that means for you and your research. And so if you're somebody who is in the social sciences, this may be surveys or interviews or questionnaires and the information that you've got from here. Or if you're somebody who's in the hard maths or the STEM field specifically, or more generally, I mean, uh, this may be where you actually present your data sources, you know, your tables, your numbers, your formulas, your equations, and really bringing in what your dissertation is about collecting or what it's evaluating. And then your final chapter will be your findings. So now that you've presented what all the scholarship is about in your literature review, how you're going to collect that information through your methods and methodologies, what is the data that you've collected, now you need to interpret that data. And that is your final dissertation chapter where you as the professional, as the scholar, are taking all that information and making it make sense to the reader and bringing in your perspective and your research and your 
personality even, and putting it into your dissertation. What is great about this kind of structure is you know what you're getting into as you start your dissertation or as you start your PhD process even. If you are somebody who is in a program that is formulaic like this, you can start preparing early for your literature review, for your methodology chapters, and spread it out across your time as a PhD student. Now, if you're somebody who's interested in learning more about literature reviews or annotated bibliographies, I will plug those videos that I have at the end screen or leave them in the description box below because I definitely think that can help you. Now, if you you are a graduate student in the humanities, there's some good and bad news because our approaches are a little more loosey-goosey. We don't have such a formulaic structure. Now, if you're somebody who does have a committee that is okay with that structure, and you feel confident and comfortable with that structure, with humanities, you do have more flexibility to try it out and see if that works for you. But oftentimes when it comes to doing humanities research, and that could include anything from art history to cultural studies to a variety of different things like film and on and on and on, it's important to recognize that our dissertations are more about presenting our research in a logistical progression that builds up. And so the way I like to present it or think about it is that our dissertations, I mean all dissertations really, but specifically in the humanities, can be written in such a way where they're kind of mini books. And so when you are presenting your information, you want to bring your reader through a logical progression where you're starting off with the most basic information and bringing them in bit by bit all the information they need so they can get to your conclusion and understand what was the purpose or what was the major contribution of your dissertation. And so this can look a variety of ways. You can do comparative analysis where you have an introduction. Maybe you still have a literature review or maybe you have a historical context chapter. Then you may have a chapter on one thing and a chapter on another thing where you're comparing and contrasting them. And then you might have a conclusion. And other dissertations, you may have a case study model where again, you may have an introduction. You may have a chapter that is building in your methodologies or your main theories that you're going to use as your analytic. And then every chapter after that is a new case study where that analytic is applied. So when it comes to the humanities, it's really important that you have a good understanding of how you're planning to present your information versus thinking about a formulaic approach. Our dissertations have a lot more fluidity with how they are written, and thus it can be both freeing in the sense that you have a lot of authority of how your dissertation or how your research is being presented but it can also feel very intimidating because it's not very straightforward and you may not know what your third chapter is going to do. By having a good understanding of what are the possible formats of your dissertation, you can go into your academic advising meetings or your faculty mentor meetings and ask good questions to help you move forward. And in a few months, I do hope to have a video that talks about how I am structuring my dissertation. So if that interests you, don't forget to subscribe. Now, of course, there are a variety of ways that dissertations can look, and I've only uncovered a few examples. And so if you're trying to figure out what is the best way to write your dissertation, I highly suggest you do two things. And that is read dissertations that are in your interest topic or in your research focus and see how they structure it and feel that out and see if it works for you. And then make sure you talk to people, be it your academic advisor or other graduate students in your department to see how they are structuring or talking about structuring their dissertation. You can also read dissertations of your faculty in your department to see how they wrote it. But again, things may change across, you know, 50 to 20 years ago when they were in graduate school. So now that we talked a little bit about what is a dissertation, how is it formatted for STEM and humanities, I think it's time to talk about why it matters. When you are a graduate student, you are learning a variety of different skills. And this is spanned across your whole academic career. Bit by bit, you're learning how to become a scholar. And so when you start a PhD program, specifically in the US, you're expected to take coursework. You're expected to do exams. You're expected to do field work or re independent research. And you're expected to do a dissertation. And your dissertation is the final product to demonstrate the success or present an opportunity to assess how well or how much you've learned throughout your graduate process. And so your dissertation is a product or a final paper, essentially, that you are presenting to your committee members to see if you passed or failed. So essentially, it's like a final paper. It's just a huge final paper. 
And that's important because when you're thinking about your dissertation, oftentimes you want it to be the most prolific and beautiful thing that has ever been written. But generally, once you graduate, nobody really reads your dissertation. And so when you're thinking about who is your audience or why you are writing your dissertation, outside of your own personal reasons, be it your family, your community, or yourself, it's also important to realize that for the most part, it's just you and your committee that's going to be invested in this document. And so this is important just to make sure that you are having perspective when you are writing your dissertation versus putting all this pressure onto you to make the world's most smartest, most prolific document that's ever existed, really seeing it as a giant final paper so you can graduate and move into your next part of your life. However, just because not a lot of people are going to read or even see your dissertation doesn't mean you can't use it or won't be useful for you in the future. Dissertations are an amazing first step or stepping stone into your professionalization as an academic. Many people get portions of their dissertation published. Some people have their entire dissertation turned into a book. If you write a dissertation that is good and you feel proud of, you can also submit it to awards to get funding or support or just accolades. And those awards or acknowledgements help you when you are on the job field and make you more competitive as an applicant. So I think it's important to see your dissertation not just as the end of your PhD process, but as the beginning of more scholarship that may interest you. Now, of course, this was just the basic overview about dissertations, and there is so much more to know about the grad school process. So if you are in the grad school process looking for more support and guidance, don't forget to subscribe. And as mentioned, don't forget to follow these past videos so you can learn more about writing and preparing for your dissertation. If you found at least two things useful, definitely hit the thumbs up so YouTube will share this video with others who may need it. Your support helps a small YouTuber like me continue to grow. So I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.